Okay, right. Okay, thank you uh, very much for giving me this opportunity. Uh, in my uh, in my introduction, I spoke I have spoken about my uh, area of work and my organization's areas of work. But at the moment, we are uh, completely focusing on uh, corona-related um, research and various you know from various angles. Uh, uh, and of course, those are mostly from uh, economic and social point of view. So the, my presentation will uh, focus on some of the economic implications of COVID-19 on Bangladesh economy. Uh, since the uh, outbreak of coronavirus in Bangladesh, actually the first case was identified on 8th March. So we had uh, quickly started to, you know, reprioritize our research area and uh, started work on that. And since then, we have been continuously working on, on the impact of uh, coronavirus on various sectors and also the stimulus packages which have been announced by uh, the government. So my, in my presentation, I'll briefly, there is a table of content, but I don't know how much uh, time I'll get to go through each of them, but uh, I'll, sometimes I'll have to you know, cut short. Uh, so uh, let me just start with the brief introduction that um, as we Could you share your screen? Oh, it's not being shared. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. Right. Uh, yes. Great. Okay. So, um, so as in other countries, uh, we are also having a serious health and economic impact of COVID-19. And, uh, and as you know, that uh, the impact of this, the extent of the impact is still, you know, uh, is still an ongoing work. Uh, various international organizations have tried to estimate what would be the exact implication for economies around the world, but we can't say it for uh, um, sure because it will also depend on the duration of the COVID-19 and also the extent of its um, uh, ferocity or lethality on the, uh, on the country itself. Uh, for Bangladesh, international organizations, for example, IMF has projected that the growth will go down to 2%, which was in fact, uh, you know, 8.2% um, GDP growth rate for Bangladesh. It was projected by the Ministry of Finance. So 2% um, against 8.2%, uh, which is really going to be very, very, uh, very, very devastating. And also it is going to have an implication on the em employment. Uh, at the initial phase, Asian Development Bank had projected that there will be um, 9.5, uh, 9 lakhs, I mean, so, yeah, it was nine and a half lakh people will lose. Uh, but as we have, that was in March, early March. But as we are progressing, we're seeing that um, increasingly a lot of people are um, becoming unemployed, unemployed, and particularly people who are working in the uh, Middle Eastern countries and Southeast Asian countries where most of the migrant workers work uh, from Bangladesh. Um, increasingly, they are returning. Uh, just a couple of days back from Saudi Arabia, 10 lakh people have um, returned. So one doesn't really know that how much, how many people will return and whether they would be able to go back after the COVID you know, period. So, so these are you know, uh, the key indicators where the COVID is going to have uh, impact, uh, which is definitely showing a diversity in, in the scenario. Now, we, I just tried to um, I put the, the transmission channels to which uh, you can see that how the economies are going to be you know, affected. This is for Bangladesh, but I guess you know, it is applicable to many other countries because um, the, for the transmission channels, we see uh, at two levels the impact can happen. One is from the global level, and at, uh, the second one is at the uh, domestic level. Since the economy of Bangladesh is integrated with the global economy um, through export, through import, through foreign direct investment, through remittances, most importantly, and also through foreign aid, so the, any impact at the global level 
we'll also have a have a fall back impact on bangladesh economy so we i have tried to show here that how if there is disruption in global supply chain how it's going to have an impact in uh, bangladesh similarly global global trade uh, slowdown the angtad has already projected um, the shrinking of global uh, trade and this is going to have an impact as i have mentioned that uh, since we are integrated and one of our major um, uh, export item which is the ready made garments uh, industry uh, so that is facing serious uh, implications i'll come to that but this is just to show that in the other um, impact can uh, other channels can be global uncertainties because i have mentioned that you know, one doesn't really know that when this covid will end and how much impact it will leave behind and when the world can uh, you know, again bounce back uh, the other uh, fourth uh, channel is that as a whole global economic slowdown so uh, this chart again shows the channels at the global level now i'll come to the domestic level Amita, so, sorry yes. if i could interrupt uh, yes. um, could you could you make the, the the powerpoint full screen it might make it a little easier to see yeah okay okay yeah that's true all right yeah it would be both Thank you. Yeah, bigger yeah so you can see that as i I have mentioned that as a result of global supply chain the import payments import is going to uh, has already declined in fact you know um, for many of our uh, industries uh, raw materials are imported from mainly from china but also from other countries even in india turkey and other european countries to some extent so um, so as a result of this covid-19 the import has declined um, and this is going to have uh, also uh, because there is also in a revenue implication for me, for um, from import you know so the revenue uh, is going to be uh, squeezed also uh, i'll come to that later on uh, when i'll i speak about uh, public finance in more details so uh, so this is the you know this is the global uh, level how we are going to uh um, going to be affected only one you know the green one you can see only one advantage bangladesh is having right now is that the oil price because the because of the low oil price we are uh, going to save uh, some money because uh, we have to depend on oil import uh, totally so that's the, that is the only um, you know space where we can see some uh, revenue you know space here for the domestic uncertainties we see there is uncertainty in terms of you know investment because uh, since two th uh, since 26th of march the country is under uh, lockdown though it is called it is uh, officially it is called a uh, holiday general uh, public holiday but it's actually uh, locked down and as a result the economy is under shutdown so um nothing is uh, no economic activities can take place investment is uncertain public expenditure uh, is under pressure why because you know the government has announced um huge um stimulus packages which is equivalent to 3.3% of the gdp for various sectors for large industries for export in oriented sectors for the small and medium uh, enterprises for for agriculture sector and also some relief packages for the poor and the vulnerables then the revenue earnings uh, will be affected it will be affected through two uh, you know two channels one is that because of the domestic industries um, the earnings are going to be low so there you know that the tax revenue will be low and the import uh, the other source is the import tax import tariff that is because of that also there will be pressure on revenue earnings there is also supply chain disruption within the you know domestic economy agricultural products are uh, there but uh, since because of the you know the lockdown the economy is under shutdown so the products cannot come to the market and the the farmers um are to sell their products either at, at a very low price at a through away price and in some cases farmers are also throwing out throwing away their products for example you know incidents like uh, you know throwing their milk uh, because they couldn't find any buyers or the prices were so low that they were very frustrated and they had to throw their milk products so this is there's a major supply chain disruption and in general 
slowdown of all kinds of economic activities. So this is going to so have an implication, five minutes more, this is going to have an implication on the employment, which I have mentioned earlier, and also uh, it's going to have an implication on food security. I have a lot of slides, but I think I'll not go to, to the slides because there is only five minutes. I'll uh, say whatever you know comes to my mind, but the slides you can, I'll share with you later on. You can have a look. Uh, so the, the employment market of Bangladesh is such that 85% of our total labor force is employed in the um, informal sector which means they don't have any contractual arrangement with the employer and they are low paid and mostly they are daily uh, wage earners also. But even if some are working on a monthly wage basis, their income is also very uncertain. And uh, which means that, you know, Bangladesh has a population of 16, over 16 crore, 100, 160 million people. So almost, you know, more, over 50 million people are now uh, under these these people who are working in the informal sector, they are without any income, and um, and it has been estimated. I mean, these are just guesstimate, not yet scientifically estimated. That our poverty level is twenty point five percent, but it has it might have just doubled during this period, during the you know last two months or so. So, which means the government has some even more pressure. Um, uh, at various levels since middle of uh, March, the government has announced uh, uh, stimulus packages, as I have mentioned, which is equivalent to 3.3% of GDP for various sectors. But most of the stimulus packages uh, is in the form of liquidity creation. So over 80% of the stimulus package will be in the form of loans to the businesses loans to the business, including uh, large and small and medium enterprises, and also loans to the um, farmers. Uh, the rest, you know, among the rest is some expansion of the social safety net programs, and also some allocation for the health sector. Uh, but that's not enough for particularly for the social safety net program there is a huge demand uh, for those people you know for feeding those people for the for at least two to three months and from our center we had estimated that um, if we have to uh, if, if we have to keep these people afloat uh, so there might be a requirement of 30,000 crore taka I mean I will have to convert in, in dollar which is uh, which is way above the allocation by the government. Government has allocated only 7,000 crore. Vis-a-vis, -vis, we are talking that we need 30,000 crore taka for these people uh, to survive, you know. So, and uh, also as part of this uh, stimulus package, our recommendation is that it is always good to have direct transfer, direct cash transfer to the you know, poor people so that they can also purchase uh, non-food items. And also there is a less uh, possibility of wastage and you know, corruption because it, if it goes through uh, mobile financial transaction or electronic transfer, it, there's a less possibility of corruption. But in case of food, one doesn't really know in five kg packet, whether there are four kgs or three kgs. So that's one thing. Um, so now, we, okay, I'll just conclude. So in this scenario, uh, we are going to have our national budget in, in June, on uh, 11 June, this is going to be announced and the finance ministry is in the process of preparation of the national budget. But this time, the, the uh, government is going to have serious pressure because there has to be you know, increased public expenditure because this is a crisis, coronavirus is a crisis of both supply, uh, depressed supply and depressed demand. So the government on the one hand has to increase the demand by more investment in the economy, but on the other hand also have to be careful about the investment there so that it, there's no wastage. On the other hand, the government has to also you know, revive the production and supply chain so that there is ample uh, producers in the market so that it, there's no inflation. Uh, so this financial or the macroeconomic fiscal uh, and fiscal stance of the um, national budget, which is going to be announced soon, has to be careful 
uh, in this uh, uh, case. I think I'll stop and then I'll be happy to answer the question. Sorry, I didn't go run through the presentation, but as I said, you'll have the presentation later on. Thank you so much. There are a few questions for you. Uh, Penelope, would you like to start off? Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yes, uh, hello. Uh, yes, uh, I uh, posed two questions, if may I, following your very interesting uh, presentation. You were uh, referring to packages being offered to businesses, and I'm curious to know how they have been offered, the format, uh, Later on, you talk about the loans. Are they different um, loans conditional on specific uh, terms, or are they prioritizing some sectors according to, um, well, the structure of your economy that we know is heavily dependent on the garment industry? Yes. That's my first question, and if, may I? Later on, you mention um, that they are going ahead so with can cash. Can you hold off on the second question? Oh. Because we have two more. So sure, sure, sure. So shall I respond now or you collect some questions together? Yeah, you can collect the questions then. So, so then Rinchen, next one. Hi, um, so I had a question regarding um, the extent to which the you know, sharp reduction in global demand for garments um, has impacted the Bangladeshi GDP and whether the 8% to 2% uh, drop in growth that you just mentioned, to what extent is that being driven by the sharp reduction in, in, in the demand for garments? I ask this question because there's this argument being floated um, uh, which suggests that a lot of, uh, some of these developing countries might be in a way insulated from, uh, from, from drops in, in, in demand for exports because they really rely on the domestic economy more than on, on like, you know, the external economy or the global economy that is, because they have such, you know, the exports are not a big part of their, their kind of um, the demand. Um, um, and that's why they're, they're more inward focused. So just to kind of get an idea, I wanted to ask that question. Zaki? Um, so Fahmi Dabba, so thank you very much. That was um, very interesting, very uh, enlightening to hear. Um, so the question I had was about the government relief packages. Um, and I was wondering if you could tell us something about how these are being targeted, um, whether, um, you know, um, what is the sort of criteria that, that the government is, is, is using. Um, and the context of my question is this um, article I was reading by Banerjee and Duflo uh, in The Guardian yesterday, where they were saying that there should be um, universal um, um, basic income being provided in, um, um, in uh, developing countries um, to simplify the, uh, the, the process of providing relief. Uh, and so do you think whether that, that's, that's something realistic in the case of Bangladesh and um, what would be the, um, the kind of mechanism, whether it's you know, mobile money transfer or transfer in kind that, that would be appropriate? Thank you. Okay, so uh, you, you have a, a minute and a half to respond to these questions. Okay, okay, okay. Very quickly, uh, the prioritization of the packages. Yes, um, in, in, the package in fact started with the export sector actually, support to the export sector, export oriented sectors. The government had given 5,000, um, allocated 5,000 pro taka, uh, which is interest fee. So the export oriented sectors can take loans from the, from the banks without any interest. They have to only pay service charge of 2%. So that was the first, you know, prior, so first announcement, which shows that the priority was, was the export oriented. And the RMT sector is very, very important for Bangladesh because 
84% of our foreign exchange income comes from the ready-made garment sector. And 4.1 million people are employed in the sector. So that is why it is always, of course, we always debate uh, within the country that this is an industry which is 40 years old, but still uh, you know, uh, benefiting or enjoying so many supports from the government incentives and now also. But, but uh, government has also allocated uh, support for the small, medium, and uh, micro, small, and medium enterprises. And uh, the, as I have mentioned, these are all in loan form. So the, it, these will be channeled through the banks. What the government has done that for, the la, uh, for both the large industries and the small industries, uh, government will give uh, interest rate subsidy. For example, for the law, uh, large industries, the in loan interest rate is 9%. So the government will pay 4.5% and the, and the borrower will pay 4.5%. For the small industries, uh, nine, out of 9%, the government will pay 5%. So that's how it is being, um, it has been designed so far. But as we, having said that, as I have mentioned that there's a lot of criticism also that these people who are really poor and who are just who are just above the poverty level th uh, threshold level they have fallen down poverty much more uh, support is uh, needed and that brings me to the third question uh, third you know, question of zaki is that the issue of universal uh, basic income and the targeted things yes uh, government is uh, in the uh, of the opinion that we have a very large social safety net program, but a, a, a huge amount of you know the, uh, money is spent for that. But that is very very minimal. Uh, only 500 taka is given to you know a monthly allowance, which is very small. Uh, so we are asking to increase this amount. And now the government has um, announced that it will. Uh, pay around 1500 taka but we don't you know it's not for sure but they will pay uh, some amount of taka but that should be again as I have mentioned I have also mentioned earlier that should be through mobile financial uh, 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 channels uh, through electronic you know, transfer and with regard to universal basic income this is a, something uh, but this is not an issue in Bangladesh because we can't really uh, talk about it we have this program of universal, um, uh, what is it, social safety net programs. It is under that lot of you know, packages were designed, but we are yet to implement that. But I think you know, for the policymakers, universal basic income concept is not yet you know, for something for them to uh, consider. It is very realistic. It is, very, it is the only way for that, but it is not on the table at the moment. Okay, thank you so much. We move on to the next presentation. Uh, Porikhi Ghosh, are you ready? <laughs> 